So I'm uh, with the Sheriff's Homeless Outreach Team and just assigned to homelessness around our county. Uh, Chris will be kind of going through a story map. Uh, we took the story map and made that into show some of our live demonstrations. So all the information there is live from the field. Um, it's Saturday, so nobody's updating it, so it, it won't change. The San Bernardino County, uh, kind of show where you are here. We're in San Diego down at the bottom down there. San Bernardino County, the largest uh, county in the continental United States, about 22,000 square miles, so a very large county. But most of it's just vast open land. Um, you can see here as we kind of go in uh, and some of the data there from our historical data, um, over 2 million in population, but our homeless population is not the biggest issue like here in Southern California, other areas. If you're not from here, welcome to the homeless capital, 136,000 in California. So how do we address those uh, issues? So as you see, um, as the different things here, the heat maps um, to show kind of where the homeless are, homelessness is around our county, um, two main areas. Uh, Victorville area up in the high desert area on the way to Vegas and the San Bernardino area. So uh, in 2014, Sheriff McMahon implemented our team uh, to address homelessness around the county. We're a four-man team, three of us and a sergeant um, for the small 20,000 square miles. So need to say we drive a lot and how to interact with those people, document that. And what we did prior to is we did our field interviewed card. Um, we documented that, made it towards homelessness. And we took that back and we used an Excel spreadsheet city by city, uh, 30 different cities in our county. And we made those sheets and we'd have to go back. So usually how it ended up is right before we had to turn in our statistics at the end of the month, we would be rushing to enter all those because um, we were just doing it ourselves. We didn't have analysis or anybody else doing that. So what we did is we've uh, went from that and using with ESRI, so our CAO at a county level, wanted to find a better way of having everybody use one system, wanted to know if all of law enforcement in our county was using one system. And as we know, most of our organizations are very siloed. Um, so our information is ours and the others can't share. So what we did, we broke that down using a survey one, two, three through ESRI. Um, so this is live on a, could be live on a phone. So when we're out in the field with the Android or iPhone, we could do that. This is a, our homeless contact form. So you can see the several different agencies that are involved there um, through, from our county. So it's not just the sheriff's department, it's the police departments within our county um, also putting into the data. We have it broken down by region, city, automatically GPS location uh, when you're on your phone, and then homeless type. And there's two types, um, the individual and encampment. So for this, we'll talk about the individual real quick. So as you can scroll down, Chris will scroll through, you see a lot of the questions uh, next to kin information. One and a half homeless people die in our county a week, and sometimes those go to unidentified persons. So our coroners is also on their sheriff's department. They have access. So now they can look where that person uh, passed away and on a map that we'll see in a minute and if that might be a link to try to identify that person. A lot of the questions that Chris scrolls through there is uh, linked to the HUD definitions of homelessness for those in the states. Um, and I'm sure most of your communities internationally are affected by homeless to some point. Um, so all those different factors. So when we first meet those folks, we ask these questions to get to know who they are, what kind of services to basically target those resources to get them beyond homelessness. So we'll go to that next section. So what that does is it feeds into a map. Um, so this is our homeless contact dashboard. So all the individuals that you see there, the red dots are homeless individuals. And when I mentioned the encampments on that last slide, those are the yellow dots. So we were able to take some of our historical data and dump it into here. But what we're able to do from this is we're able to zoom in, see where they are, see hotspots. Um, if we scroll over one, we could see who that person is. If we wanna see the veterans in that community, we could go to the veterans. So you can see it has the information that's collected in that contact form and it goes into this dashboard. If we wanna search for a person, we could uh, go by the person, and Chris, you can put one of the folks, Moya, and it'll show where that person moves. So then when services are, need to be rendered, um, we could look at that person and we could link them with services to get beyond homelessness and kind of see their movement around the city. Also, it has the capability um, of exporting a spreadsheet so when we're asked to provide a list, we could do that in 
matter of minutes. You could uh, put what questions you want on that form and export it to an Excel spreadsheet. So rather than us making those Excel spreadsheets, we do one entry in the survey, one, two, three, and then all this stuff is in our portal uh, back in the office. And some of it we we're able to look on collector to search for folks and things like that when we're in the field and maybe looking for somebody for housing. Also feeds into a dashboard. So this is kind of the overall dashboard. Um, you can see main, some of the main things that we're watching in our county and we're able to provide those numbers in real time to our leadership um, around homelessness, so the mental health, the chronic homeless, things like that. And then one of the cool things about this, um, a few months back I had a captain call and said, hey, what's homeless look in my community? I'm able to pull that up like Chris did within minutes, within seconds. Um, city by city, date range, time range, whatever we want to look at that to break it down for a city um, or the county. So you see here, this is countywide um, over a timeline and it updates in real time to provide those numbers um, and break them down. So really good use of trying to, all that different data that we would typically have to go back and figure out on the spreadsheets for the month by month. We used to take a lot of man, man hours into getting those and with Survey123 and the Collector app, we're able to do that within minutes now. Next part, um, one of the other things, I mentioned that encampment. So those encampments, when we click on that encampment button, it doesn't ask any additional questions, but it does go into this uh, layer here. So Southern California, we're not used to this water stuff that we've got. Um, a lot of rain this year. So this is the Mojave River, one of four rivers in the world that run north. Um, goes out of Victorville up towards Vegas. And uh, in six years of doing this, I've never seen water in there. This year, they had to open a dam and it flowed. So what we were able to do is for uh, disaster issues, we were able to go out with flood control and we were able to advise the homeless folks based on the mapping. We went out, pulled up our map, looked where homeless camps were and went and advised them, hey, the dam's gonna be opening, there's gonna be a large flow of water, which you can see there was. The other thing is that dashboard, um, that's not in real time, but flood control has that dashboard. So when we put an encampment in, it automatically ver uh, goes into the unverified. And then they have staff that'll go out and verify that that encampment is there um, to make sure that they know where it is and if they need to clean it up, if it's gonna be an issue with water flow um, or habitation and things like that with the environmental issues, then they could, they could address that. So we're sharing that across um, county departments. We also have dashboards built for behavior health and our Office of Homeless Services so they could kind of see real time what homeless looks like rather than our point in time counts. The other thing we wanted to do is include the community um, and all the other different entities that might. So just us going out and trying to locate these homeless folks, well, there's a lot of organizations dealing with homelessness. So we came up with this homeless collector uh, activity reporter. So it's survey one, two, three. It's on our sheriff's website. The main use is for public employees. Um, just a few simple questions. <clears throat> the other thing we did is starting this month, county fire for our county. They're training to have all the fire, firefighters when they go to respond to a call for service in reference to homeless, they fill this out and then we could go back and offer services. It's also in all of our patrol units um, throughout the county. And then these different providers that are out in the field, Department of Public Works, um, probation, whoever it might be, when they go out and they contact a homeless person or somebody is driving down the road and feels they want to help this person, just a real quick few questions. And that feeds into a dashboard um, also. So this dashboard here, you can see we've had this up and running probably about six months. So in the past week, nothing, nothing's been updated in there. Um, but over the time, about 300 of them, mostly encampments, sometimes the individuals. And same thing, you could layer it with the individuals or encampments. And when we're in the, out in the field, um, we just take a proactive approach to that homeless issue, um, trying to link with these folks. So we'll go out in the field, uh, pull up this map in the city that we're in, and then have points of interest that we could try to look at, uh, track down those folks to offer services to get them beyond homelessness, you can break it down by the cities, all that different thing. Um, and then with fire, 
you know, the ultimate goal to reduce those calls for service for fire also and the emergency services that are being used in reference to that also. One of the other things um, for those in the US, point in time counts uh, required by HUD. So this year, uh, for the first time, we went digital with our point in time count. And our volunteers, we had about 700 volunteers. They used their smartphone. They used a Survey123 app. All the questions were on there. But typically, the point in time counts a four hour period that um, in our county that folks go out in the last week of January, usually on Thursday. And they'll walk around. Um, so say we give them a 10 square block area, and six of that's residential, and four of it is business. They might spend the four hours walking the residential, and there's not a lot of homeless living between houses and things like that. So we might not have the best count. This year we were able to take that historical data, make heat maps and pinpoints, and we were able to break those down into the hot zones for our volunteers. Um, so we feel we got a very accurate count, and actually the point in time count numbers compared to our numbers are almost identical, um, about 2,000, like I mentioned. So we were able to take those maps and have a better accurate count through our point in time count. And that's through our Office of Homeless Services I think they're doing a presentation during user conference also if you're interested in that point in time count. The other thing that we do, we have the START team uh, here in California. Um, we went away from state prison almost and everything is county prison. So those people reintegrating into the community, um, we've created START, Sheriff's Transition and Reentry Team. So this is a deputy and a civilian employee that are at our largest jail facility. Um, they basically took the case management stuff that they would have been documenting on paper, turned that into digital on a survey one, two, three. They have an iPad. So they go through our jail facility, talking to the inmates to reintegrate them into services so they're not hitting our streets, uh, homeless and things like that, drug programs, whatever it is. And again, in real time, um, they have their dashboard with their st yeah, sorry, statistics that they're able to provide on a regular basis also. So the results of that, um, obviously increased communication. Um, we're not so siloed, so have a lot of folks working together. Um, I know that at a state level, they're gonna start working on using some of this technology and things, but really that increased collaboration between the county departments, we're able to make sure we're serving the right folks. Um, we're able to find those folks in a faster, timely manner when there is capacity available. Um, it's all geo-located on that mapping, so it makes it very easy and useful to link those people with services. And then having that community involvement has kind of brought that whole spectrum around. Um, and it's all in real time using the ESRI technology. Um, so we've had a lot better from going from paper and all that time of entering, um, and even our contacts, we went from about seven, 800 contacts to this last fiscal year, we had about 2,000 contacts. So we're able to be out in the field a lot more, um, connecting with those folks to try to get them beyond homelessness. So thank, thank you guys. Thank Esri uh, for their help and appreciate it.